So we live together. Yep. We watch football together. Yep. We talk about football together. Yep. Why don't we just start a podcast? Sounds like a plan to me. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, still don't have a name. <laughs> still don't have a name. But guys, this is the last week that we won't have one. In fact... Everybody who's watching this right now, go to the comment section below. Give us your name recommendations. Mm. What do you think this podcast should be titled? Kim, anything on your mind at the moment? I've got a few, but yeah. I'm not going to say it right now. Mm. You know I mean, I'm going to keep it off air, run it by you. I know we'll see how it goes from yeah, there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk to got, HR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got a few in mind. i got a few. Interesting. Well, it's been a good week of football. Mm. Obviously, it's been a, a big week since the last time we recorded. There's been Champions League games. There's been league games. <laughs> we watched Manchester City absolutely dismantle us. How you been, though? <laughs> Good, obviously, you know what I mean? Uh, listen, it is what it is. It was an expected result. Mm. I mean, people can say they're angry, but I'm not really that angry because I know what was going to happen anyway. Do you know what I mean? Seeing by how the game went, Champions League was okay. Expected results again. Mm. So I think it's just been a week of expected results. Arsenal battering Sheffield, we expected that. So nothing really groundbreaking, mm. but it's just uh, another week of football. More stories to come. More stories to come, definitely. Because this weekend, Kim, the, the historic rivalry, we'll call it. Yeah. Historic. Is, Liverpool- it, is, it, is it ready to be in history now? Is it mm, historic now? Well, yeah? I mean, you, something goes into history the minute yeah. it finishes. And this is going to be the last ever meeting between Liverpool and Man City when Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp are at the helm. Wow. Well, I say that in the Premier League because they might meet in the, in the FA Cup. I think they can still yeah. be. But... Let's talk about it a little bit, mm-hmm. because as it often has been the last few years, not only is it a big meeting in terms of the quality, but it's also going to be another meeting between these two that almost certainly plays a big part in deciding the league title this year. Before mm-hmm. we kind of talk about their rivalry, the connotation, what it means, how big of a game is this in the grand scheme of the season? What a perfect way for this rivalry to end. Mm. Do you know what I mean? In a title, not a decider, but a, maybe a title swaying fixture. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's exactly how it kind of began in a way. And it's nice to see it end this way. And uh, listen, this is a massive game. This is arguably one of their biggest. This is arguably one of the big... Obviously, remember that game when Leroy Sane scored the winner. No. There was We've one seen they well played too, in Liverpool, the Champions When League. Liverpool had won, I think, the league. Yeah. Next game, they gave him the guard of honor and City yeah, smacked yeah, them yeah. 4-0. That, but the thing is, that's yeah. not even probably a big game because yeah, they already yeah. won the league. But then you look at the Champions League they played and stuff. So look... This is one of their biggest ones, and I think it's actually going to deliver on the pitch as well. I think it's going to be an exciting game, and look, I, I, I've been going up and down. Who's going to win? Who's going to... I can't make my mind up right now, but mm. looking at some of the statistics and the lineups from both teams, which we'll get into, it's looking fairly even for me. Let me, let me give you a statistic that might actually help you make your yeah. decision. The last 11 times that first versus second has played in the Premier League. So okay. it hasn't always been Man City versus uh, Liverpool. But the last 11 games yeah. between first and second, first place has failed to win eight of those games. Wow. Eight of those games, wow. either second has won or draw. That's an interesting stat. Mm. That's an interesting stat because that goes against the stat of Klopp has won more games against Pep Guardiola than Pep Guardiola has won against him. And he's the only he's manager only, ever. Yes, the only manager to have a winning record against Pep. And I was looking at it as well. I was looking at further stats and I was like, Pep only has one winner, Anfield. One winner, That's Anfield. Crazy. And guess when that was? I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you, to be honest. Yeah, you can't tell me because there was no fans. It was locked down. Oh, that's the only when Foden t- like roofed it against Allison. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the only time Klopp, I mean Pep, has won mm. at, at at Anfield. So you're telling me that the first and second stat, but these are stats are also that yeah. kind of counter it as well. So it's gonna be it, that's what I'm saying. It's so hard to predict. Yeah. What are you going for? Quickly, because I don't want to make I'm this going a whole for prediction. A draw. You're going for a draw. I'm going for a two-two draw. And I think City only have Jack Grealish out. Mm. Liverpool have injuries. But Anfield, man, Klopp, knowing they're bringing City here one last time. Hey, I'm going. I'm going to go for a draw. I can't lie. I think Liverpool are going to do it, man. I think Liverpool are going to do it. I don't know mm-hmm. if that means that because the thing is, if they win this game, mm-hmm. you look at the rest of the fixtures. City still have to host Arsenal at the at yeah. the uh, Etihad. This could be in some ways a decider. If Liverpool wins this game, yeah. they 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 they, they have they probably the off? easiest fixture. It could be one. I don't know, man. Like the last meeting, I feel like Anfield will be up for yeah. it, bro. But if Liverpool win, if Liverpool win, yeah, they should. Yeah, they, cooked, I, think, I think. I think. It might be. They finished. ain't got Arsenal no more. No. 
they can run off with it. Mm. If Liverpool win, they can run off with it. You know what's so funny about the starter race, yeah. though? The team that probably has the most say of anyone about yeah. who can win the league is United. <laughs> Us and Tottenham, bro. Us and Tottenham. Oh, and we're not going to want Liverpool to win the league. Yeah. Spurs aren't going to want Arsenal bro. to win the league. <laughs> hey, man. It's, it's wild. And, the th- and then also City have that weird record against Spurs at, yeah. the, at yeah, their yeah. ground as well. So Spurs and United have such a say in it. It is going to be... In- it is going to be... But Spurs have all three of them in a row. Spurs have Liverpool, Arsenal, and City in a row. They could decide. They, they could rest everybody yeah, against yeah. City and then play their full team against Arsenal, bro. I'm telling you now. Do you know what's interesting about that? Yeah. Surely, Leas, surely Spurs cannot lose all three of them games. No, no way. Spurs no way. will not Especially because they're going to be in the race for top so four. So Spurs are going to shake someone's title. Of course. Us, but us, on the other hand, hey, we, we're, we're fully capable of losing to everybody. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. Let, let's speak purely on Klopp and Pep because... Yeah. I think they deserve the respect for what they've done, in the, not just in this league, but just in general, the, the history of football. What yeah. they, their, their fingerprints are all over the last 10, 15 years yeah. of modern day football. And what their, their rivalry has kind of meant for this league, man. I always kind of say that the biggest testament you can kind of give to both of them is the fact that they've really rewired the way modern day Premier League fans view the table. The heights that their two teams at their very best reached, I, we've never seen it before, that's for sure. And I'm not sure we'll ever see it again. At mm. least not for a, a very long time. Like teams consistently hitting 95 plus points season in, season out. Teams basically having 15 games left in the season to go against each other in title race and almost neither of them dropping points. Mm. That's really not something we'd seen beforehand. And I don't want to always say, I, for me, uh, points tally, sometimes they can be overplayed in terms yeah. of like, oh, this team had the most points, so they're the best. I don't think it's always the case because you look at a season like this mm-hmm. year, Neither none of none of the three teams you'd think will finish on 97, 98. Mm. But because it's so tight between them, the points are more evenly uh disparaged. But really, what they kind of did to rewire how Premier League fans view the mm. season in that 95 points might not be enough to win a league title. Mm. City Liverpool, I think, lost one game mm. and hit 97 points, and it was enough to win the league. Mm. That's that's, that's honestly crazy. all you can say is that's because of Pep and Klopp. Yeah, and, and let's, listen, Pep did this in in Spain too, Real Madrid has to get 100 points to win the, mm. win the league. So we know wherever Pep goes, the point tallies go to a ridiculous level. We've seen it. Like, I remember when Fergie used to win titles and Fergie kind of used, used to have the mentality of win every game at home, don't drop points against the, to- the, the big teams away. And then bogey grounds like Blackburn and stuff, walk away with a point as well. Mm. He did, and that's how his mentality was. But Pep's mentality is win every single game. That simple as that. Home, away, whatever, win every single game. And Klopp has adopted that too. And it's so crazy because you're looking at it now. And the best example of this is what Arsenal are doing. And I don't want to, I know it's about Klopp and Pep, but it's what Arsenal are doing. Arsenal won seven games in a row, scoring six, scoring five, scoring four. They're still third. Like any time, if I, if I ever heard that there's a title race and a team won seven in a row before this Klopp and Pep era, I'll be like, oh yeah, they're top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how many points are they clear? They might have Eight already won the clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're 61 points yeah. at the moment and, and Liverpool have 63. So Arsenal are a perfect representation of how hard it is to break this kind of duopoly at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, so yeah, like in terms of like, everyone can have their debates about is Prem stronger now than then, whatever. But in terms of actually the um, winning mentality that you need to have to win a Premier League now, it is it's, it has been raised. It's exhausting as yeah. well too, man. I mean, having to... <laughs> I can't imagine what Liverpool fans thought sitting through that 18-19 season where they just couldn't stop winning. Mm-hmm. They couldn't stop winning. The one time they lost was against City where it was basically like the slimmest of margins. We'll talk yeah. about that game in a bit because I think if any game between the two represents the era in general, it's that 2-1 yeah. game at the Etihad. But to go that many games winning unbeaten mm-hmm. and then finish with 97 points to stand yeah. up it's crazy but let's talk a little bit about pep and club as individuals right because something that often gets stated when these two are, are brought up is how much of a rivalry really is it and mm-hmm. i think it's also because as football fans well me and you in particular i don't know how old our, our audience is really but as people who grew up on first and foremost sir alex and wenger kind of being the the, the primary rivalry not mm-hmm. just in world primarily in england and then we had uh, obviously Mourinho and Guardiola. You had Mourinho and and Wenger. You had mm-hmm. um, you had all these different rivalries. M- M- uh, Ferguson, he obviously went against Mancini, mm-hmm. Benitez. He was beefing everybody. Mm-hmm. But those rivalries that were kind of like primarily in our minds always stick out more so than just the football, the 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 war of words, mm-hmm. the press conferences, the sometimes shoving on the on the sideline. You had yeah. <laughs> Mourinho and, and Wenger basically <laughs> looking like they were going to square up. Mm. 
and you compare it to this one, it's anything but that. You yeah. have two guys that, if anything, are always complimentary of the other when mm. they're talking about press conferences, when they're on the touchline, always a hug before the game, always a hug after the game. Pep has come out and said Klopp is his toughest ever opponent. Mm -hmm. Klopp ha has come out basically talking about him in, in glowing terms so many times as mm. well, too. Do you feel like that hurts how they kind of rank or how they're mm. viewed as a rivalry? Or is their rivalry so much more about the football that that's what you have to focus on rather than the personalities? I always think, I always feel a rivalry should have a little bit of that bad blood about it. If you're going to call it a rivalry, you know what I mean? Mm. This is a sporting rivalry and that's perfectly fine because they've given us classic games. They've given us classic title races and legendary players mm. all over the pitch. So I don't compare it in a way to like a Jose and Pep, because even if jo Pep is schooling Jose, he was he wasn't happy he didn't yeah. look like a happy man because of the press conferences because of jose was out here poking assistance eyes and all of this madness Can I say right? something actually about yeah. i actually think what i'm gonna say is probably controversial mm. i think jose's rivalry was actually much more of barcelona than it was with that's Pedro. that because, is true because the rivalry really stemmed before that he hated them from 2005 yeah, I mean... Even at Chelsea. He, you know, of course, because he his origins come as the translator. Yeah, yeah, and he was yeah. kind of like viewed as like the outsider or whatever. And yeah. his footballing ethos, his philosophy, it doesn't get more opposite than that than Barcelona. Yeah. And I think for me, yeah, you talk about the 2005, the, mm -hmm. the, the war of Rijkaard and those battles. Mm -hmm. But I think what sparked it more than anything was in 2008 mm. when Barcelona were looking for a new manager and Mourinho was at the top of his game. Mm -hmm. They snubbed him. Johan Cruyff said, stay away from yeah, this guy. Yeah. Let's hire this novice in Pep Guardiola. Yeah. And I think that was the moment we saw Inter the next year. Yeah. I think that's the moment <laughs> Mourinho hated Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. I think even by, as you mentioned, even going back to 2005 and stuff, like he used to chirp at um, Rijkaard. Yeah, and Rijkaard is like he the calmest <laughs> guy ever. Bro. Rijkaard, they say that's the only time he's ever like fired back at a manager. And then even remember the um, Jose Mourinho's assistant, Steve Clark, yeah. went on to be West Brom manager and stuff. He accused Barcelona. I forgot what he accused them of. He, he accused them of doing something in the in the dressing room. Oh, he accused Rijkaard of speaking to the ref before the game or after the game. And Rijkaard was so rattled. He's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know why they're spreading these rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they're Do spreading you remember these rumors. Mourinho fired back at him. He's like, uh, yeah. he says, uh, I, I don't know why Frank Rijkaard is so upset. Mm. He doesn't have many titles. No, he says, I, he says, I have a lot of titles mm. and he has none of them. <laughs> <laughs> and even when you think about... Um, him reading out uh, the, the press team sheet. Yeah, the yeah. team sheet. So is that the tie, by the way, where Mourinho hid inside the the laundry into basket? the laundry basket? I don't know if it was. I think I think it might have been that been, one. It yeah, might yeah. have been. Yeah, it might have been. You know, but listen, I always think a rivalry. Yeah, to make it better, it doesn't mean that the rivalry um, isn't a rivalry. So this is a rivalry. Pep and and, and Klopp is a rivalry. Liverpool and City in this era are a rivalry. But as me as a spectator, I always like that bit of bad blood because. That bit of bad blood always seeps into us as fans. As a fan, when I was uh, when I was Man United and Arsenal were at the top, you're going into school, you're really giving it to yeah, your Arsenal yeah, fans. Yeah. The Arsenal fans are really giving it to you. And I just don't know how much City fans and Liverpool fans have that within each other. Mm. It's a lot of appreciation. It's a lot of, this team's crazy, this team's yeah, you great. You like in the Bruyne going yeah, out for drinks after. that's the thing. <laughs> I like that little side of it because yeah. it seeps into the fans. Of Do you course. get what I'm it saying? It seeps into so, the players too. You saw Fabregas yes, at Old Trafford, Roy Keane yes. versus Vieira. It, it always seeps. So I like that. So, But this is a great sporting rivalry, 100%. They've met each other in every competition, I believe it yeah. is, in this run. They've had classic games. But I wouldn't put it as the top of the rivalries that I've seen. But in terms of sporting excellence, it's way up there. I don't think it can ever be top of the sporting rivalry because of the fact that, A, also, I think Pep has just been too... Has too dominant. Yeah, maybe if club wins the league this year, then you can kind of reload. And even if he wins it, it's mm. still, what, a 5-2, to two or maybe 4-2, to two because when the rivalry really started, like, that's when mm. City won four. But, yeah, I think because Pep has won so many of them, that's why I don't view it at, to the lengths of, like, Wenger versus Ferguson, mm -hmm. who really, he kind of... He, he, he went far past them towards the end, mm -hmm. but at the heart of it, they were going season in, season out. Yeah. I would say this, though, and I told you this on a, on a different podcast before. One thing that I really respect about this rivalry as well, too, is that Pep now, this era of Pep Guardiola, because he defines the last 10 years mm -hmm. of football. It doesn't define it more than when you look at every other manager in world football. Everybody wants to be Pep. Everybody yeah, wants to coach like Pep. Everyone wants to. He does his, his inverted uh, fullbacks. They yeah. do that. He brings a center back in the midfield. They do that. Arteta, De Zerbi, mm. they all have, they might not be copycats, but they have mm. massive facets of his game involved in theirs. And then you look at Klopp, and okay, he hasn't won as much as Pep, 
but he stayed competitive mm -hmm. and been his biggest rival and earned this many plaudits from him and won this many like fans of even neutrals, right? By doing it his own way. Yeah. I think that has to be applauded, bro. 100%. And look, one, I don't, I don't, I've never understood how, you know, people want to beat Pep by kind of adopting Pep things. It doesn't make sense. Every time we have seen maybe managers that have stressed Pep Guardiola out, Jose, Klopp, even Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, yeah, right? Yeah, it's true. They play in a different way. Yeah. They do not play like him. Do you get what I'm saying? So when I see the fact that a lot of these managers... Yes, it's good to take inspiration from him. He's one of the greatest coaches ever. But I think you to beat him, you've got to be different. And that's why Klopp has a winning record over him. Yeah. He does it in a different way. I saw the All or Nothing documentary when he was absolutely frightened Salah, of Mane. Mane. Frightened of Salah. Frightened of Firmino because he knows they offer something different. And these players haven't seen something like that. So that's where I give him massive, massive credit, Klopp. Like, it gave us that spectacle. Because I hate to watch a rivalry or uh, top games where teams, it looks like a chess match. Yeah. You go, we go, you go, we go. I like that blood and thunder that Liverpool were playing at and City were trying to do the, yeah. the violin You never, you never get like, like a boring it. game really between Yeah, these two, same with fair. Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Yeah. This, hasn't, this, this didn't start from yeah. Liverpool, Talk bro. Talk about it. Talk on Klopp it. was doing bits on him in, in, in yeah. Dortmund. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? We Remember that legendary um, gif? Klopp running and, <laughs> and Pep just, Pep just looking at him like, what's wrong with this guy? Bro? This guy is, has he got a screw loose or something? And like, so this has been going on for a while and that's what I like about it. And one thing is, I think Pep respects that Klopp is like that. Even, But I don't think he really respected how Jose nah, played the nah. game and how Jose incited war. Jose saw it as war. Mm -hmm. These guys see it as it's still football. Yeah. Now, Jose you know tried saying? gaining an advantage on you in yeah. the press conference. Yeah. I, I think he even said, like, before the in that Inter-Barca tie, yeah. right? I think he basically said, like, um, what, Pep, Pep won a Champions League that I'd be ashamed to claim. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. Pep says, Pep snapped back. This is the angriest I've ever seen Pep in an mm. argument. He goes, in this press conference, yeah. he's the boss. Mm -hmm. He's the boss. But outside on the pitch, we'll mm. see. Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. that, it was like, Mourinho was playing mind games, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And even when he said that, if he enjoyed his job, yeah. he wouldn't be bald. You won't lose your hair if you enjoy your job. You know how crazy that is? How could you say that? <laughs> no, honestly, I, I mean, this rivalry is, 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 is a great one, I would say. But, you know, a lot of the discussion, yeah, ends up being like, and yeah, I had it on different podcasts as well, like Klopp and Pep, like the better gaffer, the better manager. And I don't want to get too much into like, oh, he's better, blah, blah. But I do think when I hear this discussion and I hear people say that it's close, that's the side of me where I'm a little bit like, it's not close. We're talking about Pep Guardiola as the greatest graffer of all time. And that is debatable. I have my personal preference to Ferguson. But in terms of winning, there hasn't been a winner like this mm. in terms of ratio. I would love to see how many attempts at a trophy Pep has had in his career and how many he has won. I, it's probably the greatest Bro, ratio it, ever. It's probably the best definitely, ratio ever. So definitely. this, like, no disrespect to Klopp, but Pep's having different conversations. Mm. His conversation is, is he the greatest ever live? Yeah. Klopp's is, oh, are you the second man in, in this generation? Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. So when I see people say like, oh yeah, pound for pound. Yeah, they, I, well, I that, miss me with that. Yeah, Pep is on another level and, for me. And to be fair too, like that's an argument that Mourinho fans really tried running a mm -hmm. long time with Pep as well too. It's like, okay, well, Pep has more trophies mm -hmm. and Pep is winning back-to-back -back trebles or whatever, but well, Mourinho did it with Porto and Mourinho it, did it with Inter. And it's the but, same thing with yeah. Arsene Wenger and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, Ferguson pound all for this pound, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can say pound for pound what he was worth. Mm. But listen, winners win. That's true. Winners, winners dictate win. the story of football. I exactly. always say that 100%. And the thing that always makes me laugh is when people are like, oh, until I see Pep do it with a, with a team with less of a budget, as if Pep is going to be like, oh, I need to prove all these Twitter nerds wrong. Wickham yeah. Wanderers, yeah, hire me. <laughs> Bill Bow. Let me go Bill Bow. <laughs> Let me just do it with only Basque. Only yeah. Basque players. <laughs> Oh my days! It's ridiculous. <laughs> Verona, bro, bro. It's ridiculous. Like it's yeah, like the best managers. Uh, they claim the best jobs. 100%. The best players play at the best clubs. The best managers get the best jobs. It's that. Uh, mm. It's nine times. And also, have you seen how much Pep is making at City? Do you want him to just sacrifice all that money for for a bigger challenge? It doesn't make sense, man. That's nothing to take away from Klopp because, <laughs> no, as I said, yeah. I've said many times, Klopp is the modern Alex Ferguson. Definitely for me, in terms of. His playing style, obviously, is, remember I said modern, so it's an adaptation. Yeah. His playing style, the high energy, the, 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 the crossing, 
the man management, the ability to get the most out of guys where people will say ain't the greatest talent. Darren Fletcher, Jordan Henderson, the ability to get the most out of them. Yeah, he's the ceiling connection crazy, yeah. that he has with the fan base. He, for me, is the modern Fergie. And I always yeah. say, I know we could have probably, if we could have got Pet, we could have got Jose. I always felt like it was Jose, but when I look at it in 2013, we missed the trip who before. should have walked into this club? Man, it's Jurgen Klopp. He was, yeah. he is, um, he is perfectly made for for United. I just think he's the because modern Klopp. Fan. I mean, the the one thing you maybe didn't state, and I, to be fair, you did in the last one. He more than I think any manager in the modern game adopts an entire club's mentality mm -hmm. and philosophy. Like he becomes more than just a manager yeah. of that club, bro. He becomes someone who overlooks the entire footballing uh, organization, a bit like Sir Alex did with Man United. Yes. So yeah, I would completely agree. Just, the thing yeah. he's like that as well. Well, obviously we haven't seen him at another club, but Diego Simeone oh, kind of yeah, adopts yeah, that. Yeah, no, of course. But I would of love course. to see Diego Simeone go to Inter because yeah. that was another club that yeah, he used to play yeah. for. I would love to see if he That's the thing, club came that. to a, cl a club, had it at Dortmund, of course, mm -hmm. but club came to a club where he really had no relation whatsoever Nothing. and just adopted Liverpool. Larger as than like life his second personality. Hundred percent. Just to kind of finish it off too, I think something that's not really spoken about as well. Um, when you really look at how both of them have adopted as adapted as managers from mm -hmm. the day they stepped into the job to today, mm -hmm. both of them have grown a lot, not just as personalities but also as managers. And I think, kind of like Ronaldo and Messi say, like, oh, I couldn't have done it without the other. Like mm -hmm. one helped me, one one mm -hmm. the the competition helped me. I think you look at the way Klopp has grown as a manager and the way mm. Pep has grown as a manager, even the way they think, they have definitely taken a lot of influence from one and the other. Like, you look now how Pep, his game now, mm. like, when he first entered the league, I was talking to, to Sam about this earlier, they came as, I think Pep underestimated the strength of the Premier League. Remember, he was signing Nolito and he mm. lasted a year and they were getting smoked by Everton mm. through, like, pure PNP, yeah. Barkley, Lukaku. Yeah. And as the years have gone by, his teams have grown more aggressive, yeah. more physical, stronger, fitter, faster. And I think those battles with those Liverpool teams mm -hmm. that had Vinaldum, Henderson, Emre Chan, Fabinho, mm -hmm. the, the front three as well, mm -hmm. I think those really shaped the way Pep grew as a manager. And then yeah. even Klopp, who came in on this like blood and thunder, heavy metal football, mm -hmm. became a bit more methodical as the yeah. years went by, started bringing in more... T I mean, you look at his midfield now, it's night and day to yeah. the midfield that he inherited with Oxlade Chamberlain and Vinaldum and Henderson. So I think both of them have really kind of taken... A, I wouldn't say a leaf out of each his book, mm -hmm. but I've really like respected the other and how they've done things. Yeah. And I don't want to say adopted it because they are still their own men. Yeah. But I don't think one could have done it without the other. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I, I think... I think Pep could have done it though without you reckon? Klopp. Yeah. To be fair, I, yeah, I when think, we talk about transcendent, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Pep could have done it without Klopp because let's just look at his history. He wiped Spain, he wiped Germany. I just think he's just a thoroughbred, thoroughbred winner, mm. bro. Like, I just don't think anything was stopping. That's probably fair. He's anointed, bro. He's That's an anointed fair. man. I don't think anything is stopping him from just relentlessly abusing everywhere he goes. But in the Champions League, bro, remember how much he used to overthink yes. it? How much he used to get beaten That's defensively? Like, I just think, like, the, this team that he has now yeah, yeah, yeah. is, like, he looked at Liverpool, he's like, what the hell? Because Liverpool in, in Champions League, they won three... Cha That's yeah. what I think about Klopp. Three, three Champions, Champions League Leagues finals. in his tenure, and, like, yeah. they did it in, in their own real way. Yeah. You look at this last version of City. He had to sacrifice... He, yeah. Pep had to sacrifice a little bit of his yeah, way. He sold his soul, man, he honestly. Did, man. <laughs> no, but he did. He did. He sold his soul. But we brought in Erling Haaland. Yeah, yeah. He went to the four at the back, the yeah, four yeah. centre backs. Yeah, yeah. And so he kind of did, but he trying to like, trying to get away with it with the little stones moving. Yeah. Around. <laughs> but we know he's still four centre backs, mate. On the, on, on positions, <laughs> it says four centre backs. You four, know what I'm saying? Four, but, five. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, nah, he did. But I, I do think that Pep would have, not saying Klopp wouldn't have been hit what he is without, um, without um, Pep, but I just think that Pep would have carried on regardless. I think Klopp, more so was getting pushed by, by mm. Pep, I would say. What game would you say defined the Pep and Klopp rivalry more than any other? It has to be, it has to be the 2-1 at the Etihad, 18-19 season, Leroy Sané winner. But there was so much going into that as mm. well. Like, this is two of the best teams, I think you can say, in the world. You know what I mean? When you think about the end of the season that City won the demo treble and... Liverpool won the Champions League. The demo trouble is good. I like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, they won the, and they won the Champions League. These are the two best teams in the world. And the game was so heated. I remember it was night. It, felt, it was a nighttime game. Two teams at their absolute apex. Perfect. Like, it was literally perfection for both teams. And it was such a tight game. And to even define that even more, you look at the John Stones clearance. 
with, and not only that, Mo Salah was right there, about to come right in behind and score, but mm. John Stones was there. So that little moment, in a way, kind of gave City the boost to think, all right, from here, there's no stopping us, non-stop. That was the definition of a title decider. We have so many games in Prem history where you're like, title decider, but it didn't, de de didn't decide the title. You look at Liverpool City in 13-14. Liverpool won. City still went and won the title. Yeah. But this one yeah. was a title decider and proofs in the put. No, really. 100%. Especially when you look at the end of the season, City winning by two points, 99 to 97. One point. Was it one, one point? 98 to 97. Jesus, One man. point. Nah, one point that John, John, yeah, John Stones, Stones was was the difference between build Liverpool him and a statue, hundred percent. And also, when you talk about giving them the boost, you look kind of be like right before that game, City had lost actually two back to back games, mm -hmm. Leicester and then Crystal Palace. And okay, they had a game against Southampton, but a loss to, to Liverpool at the Etihad could have completely just given Liverpool an, un an unattainable mm -hmm. basically lead, momentum mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. So that game, like you said, do or die. And, and guess what? That was Liverpool's only loss that season. The only time they lost was the title decider against Man City. Do you know how crazy that is? I mean, listen, Liverpool fans know themselves how exhausting it is. Nights, man. So that was Liverpool's only loss of the season. But let's paint a picture in hindsight, right? <laughs> John Stone's clearance to stop it from being 1-0, right? If mm. Liverpool won that game, in hindsight, Liverpool could have ended the season with 100 points. So it's a centurion. Yeah. Invincible and Champions League winners. You would have had to stop football. John Stone saved football. You would have had to stop football. That would be the wow. greatest season in the history of, of life. Forget it. Klopp statue outside every Premier League <laughs> ground. Every and the Premier League. It's like NBA. They all the entire MJ jersey. <laughs> every ground. Oh my god! Listen, madness, mind yeah. blowing, bro. Crazy. So over the Liverpool and Manchester City rivalry mm. since it started with Klopp and Pep. What player do you think has been the best in that era? The player? Yes. It's tough to say. Because um, there's really been some big ones. Yeah. I would probably say... Oh, my days. That's a tough question, bro. I think I know. I, I, I find it hard to look past Salah, to be mm. honest with you. Just because, I mean... First of all, his introduction into Liverpool is kind of like what kick-started it. Mm -hmm. I mean, alongside Van Dijk and Allison, but... Mm. When I think of, especially those early big meetings where Liverpool were really like starting to show the league and show City in particular that they were here to stay. Mm -hmm. You think of the 4-0 at, uh, or the, what is it, 4-0 or 4-1 mm -hmm. at Anfield. You look at the Champions League games and Salah was at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. The halfway uh, chip, basically. Yeah. Uh, the game at the Etihad in the Champions League where he yeah. chips Ederson and Otamendi. Mm -hmm. I just remember Salah and so many of those games. Last year, even when Liverpool were kind of like, on the decline, he had that big performance at Anfield mm -hmm. where Cancelo messes up and he scores. Like this season as well too, he has the assist for Trent. I look at all of Liverpool's biggest moments yeah. inside this rivalry and all the games that they've won. Salah's fingerprints are always over all yeah. of those victories. No, I agree. I think it's hands down. I think it's hands down Mo Salah. I'm thinking... I'm even set, forgetting the little weaving yes, run against goal, City. The, the goal at, the, at Anfield where he the, won the goals of the season. Everything that you just mentioned, I think it's Mo Salah. And this one, it always feels like he has inevitability you know what i mean sergio aguero has about seven goals but never at anfield so, never at anfield and you know like he did score a big one in that 2-1 game but i don't know something just feels different when it comes to salah i think that real fear factor is there and you're talking about one of the best big game players in the premier league mm. over this era as well so yes kdb's been out there yes sterling and sane and all these names but i actually think in this fixture mo salah is is at the top of the tree I definitely agree Guys, that was our take on the Pep versus Klopp rivalry. One of the greatest that we've seen in the last 15, 20 years. It's definitely one that's been a staple of the Premier League. Uh, as always, shout out to Bleach Report for powering this podcast. They're putting all of our clips on all of their different platforms. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. So go check us out on all of those platforms. But let us know in the comment section below, what should this podcast be called? Comment down below what you think of the, the greatest rivalries in football history. And uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Peace.